Did you know one of the most influential curators of black history was Puerto Rican? His name is Arturo Schomburg, and his work helped create the blueprint of modern black studies. Arturo Alfonso Schomburg was born on January 24, 1874, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. He moved to New York City at 17 and shortly after became a Freemason. During his first few years in the city, Schomburg worked closely with revolutionary Cuban and Puerto Rican independence groups. He surrounded himself with Afro-Poriquas and Afro-Cubans and also became invested in Black American culture. Schomburg's life became about rewriting the history of Afro-descendants. He wrote about the experiences of Black folks at home and abroad and dedicated himself to collecting, documenting, and archiving books, art, and other published work across the diaspora. In 1911, he co-founded the Negro Society for Historical Research and eventually served as the president of the American Negro Academy. Schomburg became one of the most prominent figures of the Harlem Renaissance, working with people like W.E.B. Du Bois, Zora Neale Hurston, and Langston Hughes. By 1926, Schomburg had collected thousands of books, documents, and manuscripts important to Black history and sold his collection to the New York Public Library. He went on to curate the groundbreaking Negro collection at Tennessee's Fisk University and curated NYPL's Schomburg Collection of Negro Literature and Art in Harlem until he died in 1938. This collection later became Harlem's Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. While he may not be written about in all of our history books, Arturo Schomburg is one of the fathers of Black history, and he was Afro-Latino. And then from 1916, occasionally, Negro League's team came, but it wasn't until 1931 that steadily, every winter, we had Negro League teams and teams from Mexico, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, and Cuba. And that's what they call in Puerto Rico, uh, foreign league, league extranjera. Mm -hmm. And there's where we got to see uh, Martin Diego, Josh Gibson, Rap Dixon, and all those uh, great players. And as a matter of fact, I thought that Joshua Gibson, the first team that he managed was Santos in 1939. No, he managed uh, Brooklyn Eagles in 1936. Oh, really? Yeah. That, so, so Josh Gibson had two managerial jobs in his career, and both were in Puerto Rico.